Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for listening and watching. It's an absolute blessing to be able to practice with you today. Uh, in today's practice, I wanted to explore a kind of slightly different practice. Uh, I came today with the intention of shooting a kind of more grounding and restorative class, but not my style. So <laughs> I opted for something a little bit stronger. So it's going to be more of a, let's call it a power restorative. Why not? So let's get started. Sit up tall, take your shoulders back, and just close your eyes. And the purpose of today's uh, practice was to actually ground in the body and restore energy. And one of the things that I believe is that that is not a passive process. It's a very active practice. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, Anjali Mudra. As you bring your hands together in front of your heart, you're making a connection to spiritual space in a physical way. And it's from this space that we want to make our connections. In a yoga class, we just do very, something very simple. We chant Om. And the chanting of Om is the sharing of spirit through sound. Let's do it together. Take a deep inhale. Om. And bow your head to your heart. Release your hands, lift your head, open your eyes. And let's start in downward facing dog. <clears throat> so as you come to your very first dog pose, let's slide forward to plank pose just to uh, get the hands and feet set up first. So the hands are underneath the shoulders, the feet are as wide as the hips, and the body's essentially parallel to the floor, the heart open. Without moving your hands or your feet, push your hips back. As you start to go back, bend your knees, and we're going to lift the sitting bones towards the ceiling. Okay. When, we're doing, when you do this, you'll notice that the heart is getting a little bit closer towards the floor. This is awesome. From the back, and uh, don't compromise anything in the shoulders to get the heart towards the floor. That's not actually the goal. That's just the direction. So as you push out from the back of your heart, use that push to get the sitting bones a little bit more tilted. And you'll start to see like this is going into the shoulders, mid-back. If you get the sitting bones tilting enough, it's also going into the lumbar spine, the lower back. Now throughout the practice, we're going to be tuning in to the breath. We use the ujjayi breath so the lips are closed. And it just sounds like the same sound you make if you were blowing some frost onto a window on a cold winter's day. And you want that sound in and out with the lips closed. Come forward to plank pose. And as you come forward, you feel, wow, there's a little bit of a, a relief, a release already. The energy in the body is starting to shift. Things are starting to move. And then we're going to slide back dog pose, bend the knees again. And we just go back to the form of the first pose, lift the sitting bones up. Then we're going to stretch the legs straight. Now, I like to, when I stretch my legs straight, I just do a quick glance at my feet to make sure that the toes are pointing forward. If you have tight hips, especially outer hips, the toes will start to spin out. That means the heels will turn in. You want to just keep those pointing forward as best you can. In the back of the heart, nice, sweet push into the floor. Ujjayi breath, nice and sweet. Yeah, come forward to plank pose. Super strong arms and legs. So as we get into these deeper openings, uh, we actually want the muscle tissue warm. So we just do poses like this just to get things moving around. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, come on to fingertips, and place your back knee on the floor. Okay, so we're going to take the right hand to the inside of the right leg, and on your fingertips, go up through your heart. So you have a nice, active, uh, and strong, supported lift of the inner space of your body. And then just close the lips, tune into the breath. Nice and sweet.
And for each breath, as you start to see if you can stretch it a little bit, but without uh, stress, okay? Stretch, not stress. I should hashtag that. Fuck, that's a good hashtag. (laughs) My mind is an interesting place. Okay. Downward facing dog. Wow. You come into dog pose again. Just push the floor away, and you're going to send this rebounding energy back through your spine, out through your legs. Step the left foot forward, come on to fingertips. Place the right knee on the ground. Now, when I take this stance, I'm always <clears throat> just in checking my legs to make sure that the feet are still hip distance apart. And when we say hip distance apart, what we're meaning is the center of the ankle in line with the hip joint, the acetabulum. So we're going to bring the left hand to the inside of the left leg. Right hand goes a little bit wider just to accommodate. And then I'm using my strength to open and create space. And I want to use power in order and my strength to get lifted from inside. And the breath is key. You hear in yoga times all the time, listen to your breath. Well, it's important to know what you're listening for. So when you're using the ujjayi breath, you'll be able to tell if there's any part of your muscular body that is, has carrying tension because it'll grip the breath. There'll be a kind of a, uh, it's not going to be fluid. And you want the sound going in and the sound going out to be equally resonant, the same sound. Good. Downward facing dog. As you come to downward facing dog, again, from the back of the heart, push out. I'm getting a nice stretch. Even in this pose, I'm getting a nice stretch through my, uh, my costal muscles. Those are the costal muscles. Those are the muscles between your ribs, and they allow you to breathe. And so you want to get those muscles fluid. You want them to be strong, but you also want them to be fluid. Okay. Same pose. Step the right foot forward. Come on to fingertips, right hand on the inside of the right leg, left knee down, left hand on fingertips. Okay. Just take a moment here. Now, you have an option. So we're going to start to build this pose. In any of these poses, <clears throat> I call out the stages. This is stage one. In any of these poses, if the next stage becomes too, too challenging for you, just back up to the, to the stage you were just at, to the previous stage. And if it's all too much for you, then, you know, just have a seat, make a coffee, and, and just watch. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring the forearms to the ground. I'm going to move back just so I make sure I'm in the frame. So forearms to the ground. Now that right knee, we're going to actively keep it hugging center. It doesn't have to go more than center. Just want the front foot and front knee pointing in the same direction. On your forearms, open through the heart. And oftentimes I add stages as I go and then I forget the number, blah, blah, blah. So uh, if I call out the next stage and, I'm, <laughs> and it's not in sequence with the last one, just, just go with it. Come on. Don't give me a hard time. Keep the heart open. Keep the heart spacious and free. Okay, next stage we're going to stretch, stretch the right hand forward onto fingertips. Cool. And then you're using your power to the right hand to open to your chest. Fluid, strong breath. Okay. I'm going to take my left hand forward, and I'm going to reach that in line with my right hand. Now this is already starting to burn. This is quite intense. It's going deep into my hips. Press through the back foot. Lift the back knee off the ground. Now if this is too much for you, you can place the hands flat. You can place the knee down. Optional, Shavasana, at any time. (laughs) Oh, feels good. All right, downward facing dog. See, if this was a real class, I would hold you guys for much longer. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm honest about that shit, by the way. <laughs> but today we move to my ability, to my tolerance. Step the left foot forward, place the right knee on the floor. Come on to fingertips, open the heart. Yeah. And then just get spacious inside. Oh, I'm slipping into accents, be careful. This, <laughs> that can get a little funky and wild. All right, on your fingertips, open to the heart. Stage one, stay here, no problem. Stage two, forearms to the ground. I'm gonna slide back just so I make sure that I'm in the frame. All right. And see, so you see my left knee, it's not wildly going out. That's a, you know, that's a different kind of stretch, but all the time you want to uh, make sure that the front knee is in line with the front foot. And also, it takes some power and some strength just to stay with what is. And this is what we're practicing right here in this pose. And you know, I sit with this and I can feel my body wants to make movements to, to get out of this. Say like, oh, there's an easier position where you don't have to feel this. Well, in the feeling, that's where, that's where the opening is happening. We're gonna stretch the left hand forward on fingertips. Each time I go back to the lift of the heart, I go back to the fluidity of the breath. Stretch the right hand forward on fingertips. Lift the back knee up. This one's intense. This part is hard. Strong breath. Sweet breath. Oh, that feels good. I just felt an opening. Downward facing dog. Woo. That's good. From downward facing dog, we're gonna bring the right shin forward across the front of your mat. And then you're gonna do your best to get your foot moving forward without putting any pressure in the knee. So you can't really see it from this angle, but my right knee is a little bit wider uh, to the right than the outer edge of my hip, okay? The right foot is active, it's strong, and that activates the shin bone against the floor, which then protects my knee joint. Then I'm gonna use my fingertips for support to tar start to take the left leg back to move the hips back. On fingertips, open through the heart. I'm just checking in with the breath. You see her, there was a little catch there because as I was talking, I actually went a little bit deeper and my body created some tension. You know, when I notice that tension, I just want to pause. Don't blast through it. Just hold steady, observe it, and go, hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, my body wasn't sure. It maybe wasn't ready. Totally cool. Hang out. Right hand stays on fingertips in front of the right knee. Left forearm will come to the ground. So we're just doing a nice supported rotation. So my body, if you were to see my spine, my spine is still in line with the middle of my mat, okay? So I'm not going over to the right. And then use both hands to go up and forward. Now we're gonna give it a little bit of juice here. Press the right shin bone strong into the floor. And we're gonna pull the outer right hip back equally as strong. There almost may be no movement, but for some of us, if we're collapsing in the front knee, there'll be a lot of movement. It'll move back, okay? And that's the energy we wanna keep all of that weight out of the front knee. Awesome, downward facing dog, push it back. Whoa, Ooh. feels like I have a new leg. <laughs> Bring the left shin forward. And again, we're just doing our best to get the shin moving parallel to the front of the mat. This is an elevated hip opener. And so we're gonna, I'm activating my foot, pressing the shin down. And then before I start going deeper, I just do a check-in. Okay, I'm aligned. Okay, 
I can go a little bit deeper. And I go deeper by walking that right foot down, not by moving the left leg forward. Open through the heart. You guys keep your fingertips here. I need to scratch my nose. Okay. <laughs> From the last pose, I was like, oh, that really itches. Okay. On fingertips, open the heart. We're going to bring the right forearm to the floor. Fingers pointing forward. And you can see my arms are working. And then watch, watch, if you're looking at me, watch how I pull the left hip back. There's an elevation of the hips as I pull my left hip back. So it's not going as deep, but it's strong. And I want to hold, I want to hold that strength and use it. So I'm channeling that not through the hips, but into my heart. Good. And I, I just felt my body open, so I'm going to walk the right leg a little bit further back, and then back to the breath. Rock and roll, downward facing dog. Whoa, yes. Okay, come forward to a seated position. And we're gonna first stretch both legs forward and just sit back so I'm in the center. Check out the legs, move them around. We're gonna keep the right leg straight forward, bend the left knee, open the left knee to the left, Janushasana. So we'll do a few variations of this pose. As the right knee comes to open, uh, we wanna take the knee just a little bit wider than 90 degrees, but if it starts to lift, you just bring it forward. Or if there's knee pain, you can elevate, bring it forward, just adjust so there's no tension in the knee, even if you have to come as far forward as like a number four position, okay? Super sweet, super cool. Right leg, I'm just making sure that the bones, we're gonna be holding the pose for a while, so we're gonna be stretching the muscle tissue, and when you stretch the muscle tissue, you're also creating form of the muscle. So that's how the, it holds the bones when it's in a resting state. So I want to ensure that as I stretch it, I'm stretching it in line with the direction that I want it to hold bones, okay? That's very technical. You probably don't give a shit. But if you do, there you go. <laughs> On your fingertips, open the heart, walk the hands forward. And we're going to cross the left hand to the outside of the right foot. And I'm going to take my right hand and just go about 45 degrees to the right. And using both hands, I'm not going forward, I'm going up. Okay, so I'm going to hold it for several rounds of breath here. And what I'm doing is I'm actually, I'm, keep your hands here, I'm going to just show you. I'm stretching out the quadratus, quadratus lumborum, which is on the side of my spine here, as well as the outer muscles of my hip. So I'm just going forward. Now what I'm doing is I'm going, as I'm going up, I'm pressing that left hip back and down, getting a strong stretch through there. Go up through the heart and then right to the breath. Feels good. And then we're gonna fold in. Now as you fold in, you can use the left hand pulling against your foot. You're just giving some resistance. And this is, you're gonna use this energy to drop in, to lower in.
Wow, that feels good. And rise. Okay. I'm going to switch legs. Left leg forward. Open the right knee to the right. And the same checklist that we did before. Make sure that the knee is comfortable being down. Never push it. If you need to sit up, no problem. Uh, bring the foot forward, no problem. Then on your fingertips, turn your upper body forward. We're going to walk the hands forward. And then I'm taking the right hand to the outside of the left foot. And the left hand just goes about 45 degrees to the side. Now, if you're unable to, to take this hold, you can use um, a towel. You can use a strap. I just had those there to show just in case. And we'll go up first, open through the heart. I can feel my uh, lower back on the right side. It's a little bit tight, and that tightness is going down through the hip, and it's restricting uh, the movement of my knee. So I'm just pausing here. And to get the opening that I need, I'm trying to slowly shift my lower belly to the left. And I can feel right there. There's a muscle inside that is really tight. And I'm just, I'm just holding with it. I'm just staying with it. This is how your practice becomes a meditation. You're listening to, you, yeah, we hear all the time, listen to your body, listen to your body. What you're doing is you're tuning into your body. And you're waiting for that moment when it says, yeah, let's do it. And you just go in. Throughout this practice, or any of the practices, you need a little bit more time uh, in the pose. Just hit pause. And this is the way that you would actually stretch, uh, you know, a uh, uh, practice like this out to an entire day. <laughs> Can you imagine? Don't, don't do that. <laughs> do other things. Oh, it feels great. Inhale to rise. Whoa, that felt amazing. Okay, stretch your legs forward. We're going to do another variation of Janushasasana. So it's the same form of the pose, but this time we're going to open the hips a little bit wider. We can get more of a side body stretch. Take the right hand forward to the outer edge of the right foot. And you saw instinctively I put my hand on the thigh bone because I'm actually using the left hand to root the thigh bone down as I go up. As I go up, I'm going to start to go uh, towards the right. So I'm just bending my elbow. I bring it to the inside of the shin because it gives me more power. Okay. There's a few variations of this. And I'm just going to hold steady here for a little bit. Let my body open. If the knee is lifting up, don't get close to the knee. Just bring it closer to the inner hip. You can even get right in that hip crease. Right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I have a magic touch, by the way. No, that's a bit personal. Okay. You can take the left hand to the back of the head. We're going to point the left elbow towards the ceiling as much as you can. Get the chest open. And generally, my shoulders are, are pretty tight, so this pointing the elbow straight up, man, wow, that's really intense for me. When I feel it intense, I right to the breath. For those of you who are more flexible, you'll start to rotate the chest slightly more towards the ceiling. Keep the throat open. Oh, yeah. And rise. Whoa. 
Okay, I'm gonna flip around just so I stay facing you. Okay. Left leg forward, right knee stays open. Okay. Take the left hand to the outside of the left leg. Take the right hand to the inner part of your right thigh. And you're using both hands to support the left. Keep opening through the chest, keep the throat open as well. And keep the breath moving, nice and sweet. And your breath, it should sound, it should actually calm you down. So if you're breathing really frantically, like you either wanna back up, or you might wanna stop smoking cigarettes or whatever it is. <laughs> but now's not the time, I understand. <laughs> Take the right hand to the back of your head, point the right elbow towards the sky or towards the ceiling, open the chest. And you're using your power to get that space, get the rotation. And this one I can't rotate very much. The shoulder's really tight. But I'm doing my best. And rise, oof, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna turn to face you, stretch both legs forward. We're gonna go into Baddha Konasana, so bring the inner edges of the feet to touch, and you can take hold of your shin bones just above the ankles to move the feet a little bit closer to you. Now you'll notice when the feet come closer, the knees rise, no problem, no big deal. And if you need to sit on a block, if your knees are really high and your lower back is rounding, you'll sit on a block uh, or whatever. You sit on something, elevate you. And to begin, we're going to take our fingertips. We're going to put them to the floor behind us, and we're going to go up through the heart. Now, we're not so concerned about where the knees are in this. They, they may be very high. And sometimes it's just a lack of flexibility. Sometimes it's anatomical. So we just let it be what it is but we get the opening in the heart instead. Okay. You have the option, you can stay here. Stage two, we're gonna walk the hands forward. Now, for some of us, when we start to walk our hands forward, like just leaning forward, just holding the shins is, might be enough. But I need a little bit more space, so I'm gonna walk my hands forward. And then, if you're far enough down, you can take your uh, forearms to the floor, palms face up. You're gonna use your elbows pressing back against the shins to go forward and up through the heart. See, and I can feel here that there's a little bit of an imbalance in, in my fluidity, on, flexibility on both sides. So my left side, my left side is going, yeah, man, let's do this, let's go deeper. And then my right side is going, no, 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 hey, 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 buddy, <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 no. So I kind of go more just to the, addressing the right side, and it says, hey, I love you. Don't worry, I'm not going to break you. Don't worry. And the left side, I'm saying, hey, settle down, relax. Yeah, back up a little bit. It's okay. There's no rush. Yeah. These two sides talk to each other all day long. You have no idea. Oh, yeah, there you go. So the right side said, okay, okay, he's, okay. And it opened up for me. Now both sides are happy. See how that works? <laughs> and if I wanted to, I could say, and that's yoga, but you know, that would be cliche. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna slowly rise. Okay. Take your hands to the outsides of the knees. 
Bring your knees together. Okay. All right. And stretch out the legs nice and sweet. Okay. So we're going to do Ardha Matsi and Drasana. Let's bend both knees. I'm going to take the left foot underneath the right leg. And I'm just going to step the left foot over. Just shift back on my mat just a little bit. So I'm going to move it in stages. Okay. So stage one. Take your left elbow, hug the right knee, and we're going to turn to the right using the right hand on fingertips behind us for support. And I'm going to use the strength of both arms to actively open my center. What I'm doing is I'm just taking a moment to calibrate my center. So I said actively open my center. Well, what is center? Well, the center is that place where the heart is lifted as it rotates, but it's not falling back, it's not falling forward, it's not compressed. There's a sense of space and lightness, and it's going to take some effort to get that lightness, but I'm okay with that. And I just realized, like, okay, when I press my outer right hip down, that allows me to go up even stronger. Always want to get the lift before the turn, okay? I'm not rushing it. We have more grounding of the hips, more opening of the heart. (laughs) I was just thinking the ass and the heart are intimately connected. But then I thought, no, I shouldn't say that. So I'm not going to say that. Okay, come back to center. And let's switch legs. Right foot crosses to the outer edge of the left hip. Left foot steps over to the outside of the right knee. I'm going to hug the knee. And there's a few variations, and I know you guys know so many variations. So let's just do this one for now, just to humor me, okay? Use your hips. Go up through the heart. Use your arms. Steady your center. And then just... Right to the breath. On this first one, I'm not killing it. I'm just getting space. Exploring the rotation. Not stress. It's just an active opening. Okay. Checking in with my shoulders, so there's, they're active, they're strong, they're working, but they're not gripping. And this is cool because I can move my neck freely, I can move the shoulder joint, arms, everything's stable, but sweet. Oh, that's the one. Right there. Good. Come back to center. Stretch the legs forward. Okay. We're going to do the same pose again. We're just going to do a slight variation. Bend the left knee to the outside of the right hip. Step the right foot over the left leg. This time we're we're going to take the elbow past the knee. If this is tough for you or you start to collapse back, either sit up on something or go back to the first stage, okay? Take the take the elbow past. Right hand still goes behind on fingertips, but not all the way around. Almost imagine that your chest was just directly facing the side, and you're just using your arm directly out from the shoulder. And then we're going to use both arms again to go up. Again, just open that space in the heart. Let the breath flow. Feels good. I mean, it feels good for me. I hope it feels good for you. Okay. Keep the twist, and we're just going to stretch the left hand down to fingertips. If it doesn't touch or you start to collapse, boom, back to the, 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 la- the last stage, okay? Now I'm going to use both hands to get up through the center of the heart. And I'm using the arm against the knee to get a little bit of rotation. Okay. 
Good, come back to center. Oh, that was strong for me. All right, stretch the legs out, switch sides. Right foot crosses over, left knee goes over top. Right, stage one here, elbow grab. Stage two, elbow past. And I'm just adjusting, making sure that my sitting bones are grounded. Left, as the chest turns to the left, left hand behind me on fingertips. And I'm using both arms to go up through the heart. Staying strong. Light. Stage two, next stage, stage three, sorry. Fingertips stretch down and use my strength again. Reconnect, go up. This side's a lot more intense because of the outer right hip on the, on the back side, the right side. So I'm not going to force it. In fact, I'm going to move the left hand forward a little bit so I'm not so deep in the twist. There, that's better. One more full breath, one more full breath, stay in it. Yeah, bring it out. All right, stretch out the legs. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna go into Gomukhasana. So I'll actually use a strap. Actually, I'll use a towel because most of you guys will have something like this at home. So this is just a regular towel, it's nothing special. Okay, uh, it is special because it has our logo on it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cr- I'm gonna cross right knee over left knee. And watch what I do. I'm going to actually use my hands to lift me up. This gives me a little bit of space and more mobility. Now, if you start to lower down, whoa, your eyes pop out of your head. One, take care of your eyes, but sit up on something is totally cool. I'm going to lower down so the hips come down, keeping the knees as they are. I'll take the towel, just kind of roll it up, and I'm going to drop it down my back. So I'm just bending the elbow. I'm going to take the left hand behind, and I'm going to walk it up as high as I can, getting close to the other hand. Now, in this, in this pose, I can actually grab my fingertips on this side, but I'm using, I'm using the towel in order to, uh, to get more lift, more opening through the chest, and also just to show you. Okay? So we're going to make a little adjustment here. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to move my left hand. So I want to show you this part of the arm. This is the tricep. We want that part of the arm pointing forward and the elbow pointing up, okay, as best you can. If you really tighten your shoulders, the elbow will most likely be pointing down and out to the side. Do your best to kind of swoop it in and up, okay? Keep the heart open. Keep the heart sweet. Deep breaths. And this is, after my shoulder surgery, this is, uh, years ago, this is one of my least favorite poses. So if ever I show up into one of your classes anywhere in the world, don't do this pose, okay? <laughs> do handstands. <laughs> Couple more breaths. And I just let the breath out through my mouth because this one was pretty intense for me. So I'm just letting the energy go. All right, release it. All right, shake out the arms. And let's switch legs. We're going to come back to this form, but I want to switch, uh, just give a, a little bit of relief to the, uh, to the legs by switching them. Okay. And you can also, again, lift the hips up, lower the hips down as you need. Take the strap or towel, or you can use a belt, whatever. Take the left arm overhead. See, and this arm's a little bit tight. See how the elbow's pointing out? So I'm doing my best, and it's actually tight and slightly weak, I can feel. So I'm going to take my hand behind me. You can see, like, in, in order to get that grip, I'd lower my head and all kinds of effort. But then once I have it, I come back to center. Back to the breath, and I'm going to do my best to get that tricep forward and elbow up. It's interesting. 
in this pose because it's, there's so much, uh, you know, it's weak, but it's also not so flexible. I notice that my body trembles. And it's trembling not as a tremble that is like a, from, from being exhausted or weak or something. It has like almost a fear response. So I want to just observe that. I want to just use my breath, settle into it, and send a signal to my body. It says, hey, man, it's okay. You know, it's possible that after you know, things like surgeries or some kind of injury, that the body holds the, the memory of the experience and it holds it as tension, stress, fear. And we use this practice to observe those things and, and work through them. You don't need to conquer them, just work through them. Once you work through them, you can work with them. Hmm, it's deep. <laughs> Open the heart. Oh, yeah, there you go. See, my body's responding. Thank you, body. Ah, oh, that one feels good. Okay, and release. Whoa. Okay. Stretch the legs out. Check them out. Okay. Okay. Shake your legs out. Okay, so now we're going to go into the form that we did the first time. So I'm crossing the left foot under, right knee over. So we're going to go for a tensor fascia stretch, which is partially the upper part of the IT, but we're also going to do a little bit of an IT stretch, okay? So on fingertips, lift the hips, I square. Make sure the knees are on top of each other as best you can. And we can take the right hand to the front of the bottom knee. And I'm actually grabbing the, the kneecap. Take a little bit of a rotation. Use both hands to go up through the heart. And then I'm going to lean back slightly. Okay? And then I'm using my right hand. The bottom, the hand that's on the knee, I'm pulling to the right. Pretty, pretty strong, actually. And as I pull, I'm pressing the knees down to resist. And that's opening through the whole outer edge here. And those of you guys who are super, super flexible, don't overdo this, okay? Just chill. Just go for the opening first. You know, I know some of you guys can drop this into a back bend. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. One more breath. Wow, yeah, that felt good. All right, let's switch legs. Cross the right foot under, bring the left knee over top, lift my hips up, get the knees on top, and then settle in. See, and as I settle down, poof, knees popped out. So I'm just going to use my hands on the outer parts of the knee, upper parts of the knee, and just kind of root them towards each other. And then let, let that settle first. And then take the left hand to the bottom knee, take the right hand to the floor behind me, and then I'm going to go up first as I turn a little bit and lean back slightly. Wow. So for, on this side for me, it feels like my hip's about to explode. <laughs> this is really tight. So I just keep going up, stay focused on my breath. more breath. Wow, yeah. Come back to center. Stretch the legs forward. Shake it out just for a moment. Wow, yeah. <sighs> okay. Come on to our, let's come on to our backs. And 
actually what I'll do is I'm gonna turn to face this way so that you can actually see what I'm doing. All right. As we come onto our backs, in a while I'm gonna stretch the legs straight so I just wanna make sure that I'm in the frame. So bring the right foot into half happy baby pose. So you're just holding the right hand to the outside of the right foot. Notice how my forearm is on the inside of the shin. So I'm kind of, I can hug in against my arm. And I angle the knee just enough so that I can actually bring the knee to the floor. Okay. So, and I know some of you guys, you'll rock to the, to the side and bring the knee to the floor. Um, in yoga, we call that cheating. Okay. Keep the hips square level. Bring the knee down as close to the floor as it'll get. I'm just gonna tune into the breath. And sometimes I use both hands to give a little bit more power, a little bit more energy, but again, no rolling. Mm -hmm. You can feel it right in the hamstring here for me. A little bit tight. Okay, stage one is here. Stage two, stretch the left leg forward. And you see like immediately it gets a little bit more difficult, challenging to, to anchor that knee down. So I just glance at the foot. What I wanted to do is make sure that the foot is pointing forward and the toes are straight, uh, so, sorry, toes straight up and down. And this is pretty intense. Now, now I'm actually putting quite a bit of strength against my foot, and I'm kicking my foot into my hand every now and again to kind of create some resistance. And then I keep the engagement, and then whoa, the knee comes a little bit further down. Keep hold of the foot. And then we're gonna slowly, sweetly start to bring the knee towards center as we straighten the right leg. Wow, that's pretty intense. If you need a, a, uh, to use a strap or something, go for it, or your towel. You can even just grab the shin bone here, like, like I'm doing. I'm gonna hold onto the shin bone on this side. And this is the leg that gets really tight from running and it's starting to open, so I'm gonna explore reaching. Yeah, there it is. And I'm hoping that the leg is straight. Right. If it's not, yours doesn't get straight, it's totally cool, okay? But I'm shooting a video, so <laughs> it should be straight. <laughs> you know, it's those things you, you know, you're like, wow, man, I kicked ass, and like was so straight. And then you look back, and it's like, it's like half bent. <laughs> Uh, the stories we tell ourselves. Wow. Okay. And also, you shouldn't be looking at my leg. You should be worried about or focused on your own leg. Don't worry about it. Just focus. Okay, bend the knee and release. Whoa, both knees bent. Oh, yeah, that felt amazing. Okay, let's do the other side. I'm going to flip around so, again, you can see. I just make sure that when I stretch my leg, I'm still in the frame. Okay, half happy baby. And also, I wanted to flip around because this is actually my, my good leg, so you can touch the floor. They're both good legs, but this one goes deeper. Okay, taking both hands to the, to the foot for me on this one and keeping the hips level, and I'm just you start to root the knee back. And you can try exploring, like uh, imagine that the belly, the lower stomach, was turning to the right as you're bringing that left knee down. I'm just tuning in. I just noticed I was holding some tension on my left shoulder as I was uh, trying to get some power into the foot. right there. 
You can stretch your right leg forward. You have the option to stay there. And I'm just checking in. What I want to make sure is that the foot is going, the leg is going straight forward and the toes are straight up and down. And if I can hold that, then I'm starting to root it. You can back that foot up any place you need to be in order to keep the hips level and get this opening. Okay. Okay, let's start to bring the knee towards center, keeping hold of the foot. And then nice and sweet, work the leg straight. I'm gonna pause here. Deep breaths, we're almost there. And release, whoa, yeah, both knees bent. We shift it to the middle, all right. And now the moment everybody has been waiting for, no, it's not Shavasana. It's full happy baby pose, baby. All right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, full happy baby. So holding the outsides of the feet, I'm going to bring my sh forearms to the insides of the shins. Bottoms, see my feet are active, so they're, they're, they're still engaged. I'm still using strength. And then I'm going to draw the shoulders back and use the power of my arms to root both knees down. Now, as the knees uh, start to move towards the floor, keep the heart space open. Very sweet breath. Then I want you to visual, not visualize, but um, feel the sitting bones moving towards the floor. So this is going to rock your pelvis slightly and start to get the lower lumbar spine lifting away from the floor slightly. Okay. As the sitting bones move towards the floor, I want you to move the sitting bones apart. And it's gonna create a little bit of space in the pelvic floor. Okay, we start to bring the, keep hold of the feet, bring the knees towards center. And then to the best of your ability, you're gonna stretch both legs straight. As I'm holding my feet, I'm going to draw the shoulders back to the floor, keeping the feet together. And again, if the knees need to stay bent in this, it's totally cool. It's, not a, it's no problem. But do your best to get them straight. Start to stretch them. A couple more breaths here. Oh, yeah, that felt good. Bend the knees. Hug the legs in, take a moment. Okay, turn to your side and use your hands to lift you up to a seated position. Stretch both legs forward. Okay, just before we wrap up and we get into pranayama meditation, I wanted to do just a very sweet shoulder opener as well, okay? So we've done this in a couple of other videos. Uh, but we're going to do a little variation. I'll show you the variation very quickly. Palms up, forearms together. And then we're going to sit back. And then at one point, we'll bring the hands together in prayer pose. And then we're going to lift the, the forearms up so the fingertips are up, okay? But my chest will be a little bit closer to the, to the ground. My head will be in between my arms, so it'll be difficult to talk. So let's come on to the knees, uh, forearms and the knees. And I just shift my knees slightly behind my hips. Turn the palms face up and bring the forearms together to touch. Press, and the key to this pose is to keep the arms from moving, either with you or apart. You want to keep them planted on the ground, elbows together. And we're going to start to sit the hips back. And I need to move my hips back a little bit because they're a little close. And then as you press the forearms down, move the hips back. Start to melt your heart towards the floor. 
This is not a forceful thing. There's, there's active energies, there's strength involved in this, but then there's kind of a settling into that strength, not forcing anything. And I can feel my elbows wanting to slide apart, so just back up a little bit, reconnect. A few strong breaths here. And I can feel this going all the way through the costal muscles, the muscles between my ribs. Okay, palms together. We're gonna balance on the elbows, fingertips go out. Just checking my mic, yeah. And then I'm gonna move my arms forward just so I'm more in the center. Fingers up, knees back, and sit back. Now I notice in this one, the elbows will come up slightly away from each other. It's totally cool. Because you need a little bit of space for your head to settle in. Cool. And release. Wow, that feels really good. Okay. Come to a seated position. I'm going to turn to face you. And we're going to do a little breath work. We're going to do a little pranayama. And then we'll do a sweet meditation, shavasana. And we're out. Okay? So this is open, it's called open sadasana. So you can come into sukhasana, open sadasana, or closed sadasana. So I'm just aligning my ankle bones with my pubic bone. And come on to you. Uh, sorry. Open through your heart. And we're gonna be focusing on the hold of the breath at the top of the inhale. So we're gonna be inhaling for five, holding for 10, exhaling for 10. Now, what we want to do when we're holding the breath, you're putting pressure on your system. And we wanna keep that pressure down. That's why when you hold your breath for a long time, your face turns red. All of that pressure is rising. It's looking for a way out. We wanna keep the energy and that pressure down in, in, the, in the torso, in the chest. And that, that pressure is gonna create some opening and it's gonna help uh, the circulation and, and, and all of that, the respiratory system as well, okay? So um, as we hold the breath, to keep it down, we're gonna do Jolandar Bandha. The chin goes down, chest goes up, and we're gonna, it's called chin lock. This is the clavicle notch. We're just going to tuck the chin in there. If it doesn't touch, no problem. Uh, as we start to generate and move this energy around, you're going to feel it. Uh, we're going to use uh, chin mudra, index finger and thumb touching. Now, what I really wanted to focus on, too, is, uh, is the feeling that you get after you release the breath from a strong hold. Uh, we've all heard of this word nirvana, and those of you guys who've been in my class, you've heard me talk about this for this talk, talk about this before. That word nirvana it means to blow out, and there is a relief and a release when you've let something go that you've been holding. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a beautiful inhale in, all the way to the top. Hold at the top. Pause. There's a little bit more space in you. I know. Take it in more. And hold. I know, there's still a little bit more. Take it in. You feel like you're about to explode out through the mouth. And there's a lightness. You feel it? There's like a, a relief in your whole system. And that lightness is what we want to tap into as we transition from our breathing practice, pranayama, to meditation. Okay? So let's do it. Sit up tall. Take your shoulders back. Open through your heart. We're going to lower the chin down, Jalandar Banda, and we're going to keep it down until I ask you to lift it at the end of the pra of breath practice. So we'll take one cleansing breath, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, close your lips, inhale for five, four, three, two, one, hold for ten.
three, two, one. Exhale for 10. Three, two, one. Inhale for five. Hold for 10. Exhale for 10. Two, one. Inhale for five. Hold for 10. Two, one. Exhale for 10. Inhale for five. Hold for 10. Two, one. Exhale for 10. Two, one. Inhale for five. Hold. Exhale for 10. Four, three, two, one. On your inhale, big breath in. Exhale through your mouth. Feel that release, that relief. It's beautiful. One more time. Inhale in. And exhale through your mouth. Cool. Keep the eyes soft and closed. And with that same feeling that release the relief, we drop into our meditative state. And what we realize is that Thoughts occur very much like the pulse of a breath. Comes and it goes, comes and it goes, comes and it goes. And as we sit in meditation, we watch these little bubbles of thought come before our awareness, our consciousness. And by observing them, we have no need to hold them. They're just things that are happening. And as soon as we realize that they come and go, and there's no need to hold them, we're able to release any emotion that we have about them. And this gives us a sense of space, inner space. And that space is our relief.
Come on to your backs for Shavasana. As you lay your body out, turn your palms face up, allow your arms to rest at your side. Allow your legs to settle, your feet will open to the side slightly. And you wanna create an opening in your heart. And your heart space is where the energy of the universe that supports you, it enters you. You don't want to harden that ever for any reason. And sometimes it stays, it requires a great strength to keep that space open. And that's what we practiced here today. If you need a little bit longer time in Shavasana, just hit pause and you can join us when you're ready. Begin to deepen your breath. Move your fingers and your toes. And start to move your hands and feet, your arms and your legs. And very sweetly Bring your knees in towards your chest. Give your legs a beautiful, sweet hug. Turn to your side. Pause on your side. And use your hands to lift you to a seated position. As you sit up, bring your left hand onto your chest, bring your right hand onto your left hand. Sometimes it's very difficult to stay open, to stay positive, to keep the light strong, to keep the light bright. But it is a practice, and we do know that if we're working together and we're supporting each other, and we're communicating, and uh, just sharing who we are from the deepest part of ourselves, that light will stay strong, the heart will stay open. It's just a practice. Bring your hands to prayer pose. Bow your head to your heart. As you bow your head to your heart, soften your mind, relax your mind, and allow the light of the heart to rise, to penetrate, to inform, Bring your hands to touch your forehead. Bring your hands to touch your lips. Bring your hands back to rest at your heart. Namaste. 
Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate these opportunities to share with you. And uh, through this process, my, my own practice is expanding and I feel shifts in my own body. So I hope it's helping you and I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you so, so much. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I love you. Have a fabulous day and an amazing week. Bye.